The notion that the world makes sense and God is in control should be a comfort. But to someone who's suffering like Job, it's an insult. These friends' words don't sound that different from things that we hear people say today when they gather around in hard times. Right? People come by in the midst of a tragedy and say, everything happens for a reason. Now, this happened to teach you something. Or, God never gives you more than you can handle. Well, the problem is that Sometimes we do get more than we can handle. Losses cause people to break down, to become cynical and bitter. Marriages break up. People become addicted and some even commit suicide. And the idea that some tragedy happened to teach us something, we'll talk about blaming the victim, Right? It leaves the little girl who lost her mother feeling guilty that she has been, if, if she had been smarter to learn her lesson more easily or in a different way, her mother wouldn't have had to die. That's why how we try to explain these things matters a great deal. It's one thing to say that someone learned a lot from their mother's death. But it's a whole other thing to say that her death was meant to teach you something. Because in that scenario, your mother died because of you. You see what I'm saying? And that's cold comfort, if I've ever heard any. Now, when I was in high school, a teenage friend of mine was killed by a, a drunk truck driver. When it happened, my friends and I made a pact that we would never drink if we'd, we would never drive if we'd had too much to drink, and that we would make sure that no one else that we were with, no friends, would drink and drive. Now, none of us believed that Wendy was killed so that we could learn this lesson. But out of our love and grief, we decided to grow up instead of grow angry. But as Job asks, why do the wicked get away with so much while the righteous get afflicted? One answer favored by many people and religions is to believe that there's another world in which the righteous will have their day and the wicked will suffer. It's understandable how this idea of hell developed because then the wicked will finally get their due. And the moral equation will finally balance out. Now otherwise, life is unfair and the afterlife is unfair. The problem with this theology is that it turns God into a jailer and a masochist. Then there's reincarnation as another popular answer that some people prefer. We like the idea that the guy who we can't stand in the office, who has no integrity, will be reborn as a horny toad or a cockroach. <laughs> Again, that balances the moral ledger sheet and eases our mind that life and God are somehow fair. A person believing in reincarnation can see a child that's born with a severe deformity and have an explanation that the person had done something to deserve it in a past life, as had the child's parents who will raise him or her. Right? All of these are ways in which people try to understand life's sorrows and losses. All of these are ways that people try to cope with the experience of living in a world that's unjust. And all of these are ways of trying to maintain that God is both just and all-powerful. But in the light of the history of racism and genocide and child molestation and rape, 
We have to agree that God cannot be both just and in total control. If we believe in a God at all, we have to believe that that God is just. Otherwise, we're believing in a devil. Which leaves us with the realization that God is not omnipotent and omniscient and in control of everything. God doesn't cause tsunamis. And children or children getting run over by a bus. The reason we want to know why bad things happen is that we want to have a sense of control in a world that often feels out of control. It would be nice if we knew if we just gave 10% to the church, came to church every week, avoided lying, stealing, coveting, killing, and laziness and greed, and prayed that we'd be guaranteed that nothing bad would ever happen to us. But then, when something bad does happen, we end up like Job, asking the question, what did I do to deserve this? Because we think that if we can figure out why, then maybe, just maybe, we could avoid these things. But one... But no one really knows why a mother with two children gets struck down with cancer. Or why a drunk driver runs a red light and kills a whole family driving home from a movie? Or why someone's home is destroyed by a tornado when their neighbor's is unaffected? It reminds me of a story of a pastor from eastern Oklahoma who came back from his vacation and he was met at the airport by a member of his church. The member tells the pastor that while he was away, a tornado hit the town and the man's home was destroyed. And the pastor says, you have obviously sinned against the ways of the Lord. Repent and you shall be forgiven. But then the man says, well, pastor, your home was destroyed too. (laughs) To which the pastor replied, just goes to show you, no one can explain the mysterious ways of our Lord. No one really knows why these things happen. Even God in the book of Job isn't able to give an answer to Job for why. And that's because why is the wrong question. The only question that makes any sense and serves any purpose now that this has happened How can I go on living in positive and healthy ways? Now that this has happened, how can I go on living in positive and healthy ways? How can I find meaning and purpose in the aftermath of this loss? How can I grow from this instead of shriveling? Obviously, these wouldn't be the first questions we'd ask upon the depth of a painful loss. We need time to grieve and to mourn. We need people to sit quietly with us as we cry and we rant and we rage without giving us explanations or easy answers. Because even after we ascribe meaning to our loss, it doesn't take the pain away. The only way out of pain is through. The only way out is through. Our suffering and losses eventually lead us to a fork in the road. They, Rick, uh, um, they played that beautiful song, The Long and Winding Road, John Lennon's. Well, sometimes that long and winding road comes to a fork, right? And when it comes to a fork, one path leads to despair and detachment and cynicism and bitterness. And the other path leads to deeper compassion and wisdom and strength and connection. Either way, though, suffering leads to transformation. Either way, such events divide our lives into before and after. Because we are never the same. 